Why are you enthusiastic about Chinese biotech at this point, particularly given the regulatory environment and given the trade war as well? Yeah, well, good morning. Thanks for having me. Mm. China's biotech sector is having a moment. I really liken it to investing in the U.S. biotech sector in the 80s and 90s, meaning it's just getting started. Mm. And there's a handful of things that are making that happen. There's regulatory reform. China's FDA is called the National Medical Products Administration. Important things are happening there. Entrepreneurs are returning home and starting companies that are conducting really first-class science. And then you have the change at the Hong Kong Stock Exchange that allows these companies to list publicly for the first time. And so there's really this perfect storm happening. And what I tell investors is there's a Celgene here, there's an Amgen here, there's a Genentech, and they're just IPOing. And most people have not heard of them yet, but they will because I think this is going to be a big trend over the next well, five well, or 10 talk, years. Talk, talk about some of them, bring some of them to light. Uh, uh, tell us about your top picks in the biotech sector. Yeah, so one that I really like is called Xilab. Mm -hmm. That's listed on the NASDAQ. And it's uh, founded by a really sharp uh, scientist named Samantha Du. And she's brought in a lot of great drugs from the West. So for example, they're developing a drug called Neraprib that they partnered with a company called Tesoro on. And Glaxo just bought Tesoro for $5 billion. So that was a really smart uh, move on Xilab's part. They also have a brain cancer treatment called Optune and another called Margituximab that uh, I just think they're doing a great job with business development. Mm. Another great company that's uh, in Sujo is Innovent Biologics. This is a company that most people are hearing about for the first time, but was founded in 2011. And they're really conducting first class science. They have what's called a PD-1 inhibitor already mm -hmm. approved here in China. They just announced a drug called a, a CD-47 inhibitor is going to start trials in the United States. It's important to know that these are not just domestic Chinese companies. These are companies that have global ambitions and they're running trials in the US. How do investors insulate themselves from the risks of these companies given some of the controversies we've seen in the past around drug uses, fake drugs, and the pretty tough regulatory environment as well? The most important thing is to have a long-term outlook mm. and to follow the trend in general. In biotech, I think it's, that's more important than any other sector. You have to be well diversified because even good companies have big setbacks. We just saw in the US today Biogen, which is as big and stable as a company as you would think, was down significantly on an Alzheimer's trial. So you have to be diversified. Mm -hmm. I've created an index that tracks these companies. It's the China Biopharma Index. And it allows people to think of it in the context of the top 29 companies that are focused on this area, rather than getting into the nitty gritty of individual companies, which can be very dangerous in biotech.